What's up, Buttercup? Aw oh, man, in today's video, we are gonna be spilling the tea. Spilling hot tea everywhere. All over the place, all over the table. Might spill down on your pants a little bit. A few months ago, I did an award-winning video called What I Can't Stand About Each of the 16 Personalities, a card above my head. Whoa! But that video was a lot more subjective, like what I can't stand. How, <laughs> how am I personally offended and affronted by each of the 16 personalities. Today, this is gonna be a bit more like, how, what are the actual weaknesses of the types that make them come across in ways that it's just like, I gotta, I gotta talk to somebody about this, man. I gotta spill the tea on all of them. So stay tuned to hear me spill the tea on all 16 personalities, including your personality type. But before we start making people cry, <laughs> I gotta tell you about this video sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an awesome, convenient, cost-effective alternative to traditional in-person talk therapy. But you know, sometimes life throws us for a loop. Me, I've always been an anxious person. It really gums up the work sometimes. But you shouldn't go through this alone. BetterHelp can match you up with a licensed therapist so you can talk it out with a pro. It's super easy to get signed up for BetterHelp. You just answer a bunch of questions to let them know what you're looking for in therapy. They match you up with a therapist and you can start communicating within 48 hours. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional licensed therapy done securely online. It can be tough sometimes to find a therapist in your local area who can address your specific needs. But BetterHelp has got 20,000 licensed therapists in their network. They got you covered no matter where you are in the world. What's cool is that in your BetterHelp app, App, you can send a message to your therapist at any time. And of course, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions with your therapist. Visit betterhelp.com slash Frank James and get 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P. Over a million people use BetterHelp. Why not you? Betterhelp.com slash Frank James, 10% off your first month. Okay, okay let's, let's start, start spilling, spilling some, some tea. tea. And now, of course, quick disclaimer just because you happen to be one of these types doesn't mean you necessarily have this issue. This is just something that will crop up at scale with each of these personality types. Okay, first up, first person getting the tea spilled on them. I don't know what this is all about. ISTJs. Well, you guys know I'm an ISTJ confirmed based on the 16personalities.com test card right here. Oh, you know what ISTJs do that is like so cringy and like everyone's like, what are they doing? A lot of times they fail to express any interest in other people or any interest in connecting with other people. Sometimes it's like, what's going on with the ISTJs? Do they recognize us as being <laughs> living human beings or are are we just things to be sorted and organized according to their logical ways? Next, we're spilling the tea on the ESTP. ESTPs, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Mm, have you seen how they get like so upset, like ridiculously upset when their patience is tested a little bit? Like when they're kind of stuck in a situation where there's like not a lot of mental stimulation. They'll just like freak out and be like, this is the worst thing ever. This is terrible. There's nothing to do right now. I'm so bored. I mean, everyone gets irritated when those kind of things happen, but for an ESTP, they act like it's the end of the world and like it will never get better. Moving on, let's talk some smack about ISTPs. ISTPs way overconfident sometimes. They'll just be like, yeah, I got it under control. I understand everything. I know exactly what's going on. I'm just gonna take this leap out here and do this thing, get it done my way. I know what I'm doing. And then they just crash and burn. Everyone's like, wait, stop, please. I'm not sure that you know what you're doing and they didn't listen. Then they'll be kind of hurt. They'll be like, you guys weren't looking out for me. I can't rely on you. I've got to keep relying on myself, which ironically is what got me into that mess in the first place. <laughs> tea spilled. Let's spill the tea on the ESTJs, shall we? ESTJs sometimes lose sight of the long term. They see the task that needs to be completed now and all the people that they need to get in line to get the task done and they will just like obliterate all of them in order to get it done, not really thinking about, hey, in the long term, everyone's gonna hate me. They will just burn down all of these bridges and then at the end be like, well, we got, we got it done, guys, didn't we? Aren't you glad we got it done? Even though I, you know, 
Made you feel bad the whole time? Next up, spilling the tea on the ESFJ. ESFJ is usually very nice and friendly to people, but they have a very immovably judgmental side where they will just zone in on one person and be like, that guy is a bad guy. And you'll ask them to explain it and they, it's, you expect to hear like, oh, he, uh, that guy killed someone. <laughs> that guy embezzled millions of dollars. That guy is a Philadelphia sports fan. Okay, Frank, you didn't need to go there. But you'll ask the ESFJ and they'll just be like, I don't know, I just don't get a good feeling bad guy right there. And it could be really tough to like talk them out of that opinion they formed for basically no reason. Now let's spill the tea on the ESFPs. Ooh, honey, those ESFPs. <laughs> How do I say this? They believe weird stuff. These types can be so superstitious, like the most superstitious of all the types. And so when things happen, they're like aware of what's happening and then they'll come up with this really weird explanation of why, what's going on behind the scenes. Something a little bit out of the ordinary will happen like, I don't know, a door shuts because of a draft in the house and they'll be like, that was a ghost. Or they'll like go out and party and the next day be feeling a little bit hungover and be like, it's cause Mercury's in retrograde, dude. It don't make no sense. Now let's spill the tea. I'm not, <laughs> look like I'm gonna pour the drink. I'm not, can you even see it? Cause it's a green cup. Let's spill the tea on the ISFP. Oh no, don't, don't even go there, man. The ISFPs, they gotta come in. ISFPs will just say inappropriate stuff and then they'll like laugh about it. It's almost like they don't realize what they're saying is inappropriate or is making other people like feel weird. They'll just say stuff that they think is entertaining or amusing and everyone else is like, why did you do that? Or they'll just like laugh at an inappropriate time. Like someone will be talking about, you know, their uncle's funeral and the ISFP will just laugh at some, some little detail and it's like, what are you doing? As long as you're having a good time, I guess. <laughs> Let's move on to the ISFJ. Spill the tea on the ISFJ. ISFJ is pretty nice and they can also be pretty gullible. Pretty easily led to believe stuff as long as the person telling them is nice enough. It's not that ISFJs are dumb, it's just that when people are nice, that's the language they speak and it's like, yeah, we're having a good time together. Let's maintain this harmony. And now I've given you $80,000. Okay, maybe it's not always that extreme, but sometimes it might be. Let's take a quick break and in part two, we're gonna get into all the intuitive types who have a whole other set of issues that we gotta dish on. We gotta spill the tea on. We gotta rile up some drama. See you there. Welcome to part two of this video. And if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. What do you get out of that? Nothing really. But it helps me out and <laughs> I'm all about <laughs> doing stuff to help me out. Let's spill the tea on all those intuitive types, man. First up, the ENTJ. If you get around them when they've got to like use their emotions, they can just get like really weird and childish about it. Cause the ENTJs, they're used to going with the thinking all the time, expressing themselves logically. So when you ask them, hey ENTJ, how did you feel about this thing? Especially if it's negative, they will just get like, really mad. You'll be like, what is going on here? Or if they have to make a decision that's purely based on feeling, they will freak out. You'll be like, pick a restaurant for us all to go to. And they'll be like, well, this restaurant is logically the best one to go to because it is located here and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, just pick what you like. And they'll be like, <sighs> Next up, let's spill the tea on E. Uh, e uh, 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 why can't I speak? ENFJs. Oh man, ENFJs are so embarrassing what they do. What ENFJs do is they will do this thing of like having unspoken needs that they expect you to somehow figure out and meet. And then they get really disappointed when you don't do that. Because that's what they're doing a lot of the time. They're just trying to figure out what does everyone need and let me provide that. And they're like, everyone else should be playing this game with me. And then when other people don't, they're like, 
I am so upset with all of you right now. Actually, no, I'm not upset, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I expected more from you people. Let's spill the tea on the ENTPs. Oh yeah, ENTPs, you thought you were gonna slip by somehow? You thought you were gonna, you know, not have any tea to be spilt? The teacup was empty and I go to pour it and not a drop comes out, nary a drop? <laughs> you <laughs> Are you tripping? ENTPs, when they encounter some kind of obstacle, when they are, you know, they're trying to achieve something, they have a goal, that they're going after and some obstacle comes up, trips them up a little, even if it's something simple, even if the goal is like, I gotta make breakfast and then some unexpected thing arises, especially like a physical thing, some kind of logistical detail comes up that throws them off, they just get so bitter and they'll like give up. That thing messed up everything I was trying to do. F it, I'm not even gonna do it now. Why wasn't someone else looking out for that little detail? And then they'll like just go to the next thing. That's the, the ENTPs, they're so good at going from one thing to the next that when they, when they get tripped up like that, it's just so easy for them to go off, do something else, forget about it. Let's just abandon everything that I was trying to do before. It doesn't matter, it wasn't worth it. Next, time to spill the tea on the ENFPs. I got some tea brewed up. ENFPs will sometimes think that they are like way above whatever task that they have to do. Most usually if the task is not like fun. ENFPs will be like, man, I'm better than this. I shouldn't have to do this. It'll be in basic tasks or it could even be like in their job. They'll be like, I shouldn't have to check out these stupid customers at the grocery store. I'm too good for this. I shouldn't be having to manage these hedge funds. I'm better than this job. I shouldn't be having to fly this Boeing 747 full of passengers overseas. This is stupid. I mean, it really, <laughs> it really depends on just like what they like. And if they don't like something, they're like, oh man, I'm mentally checked out. Next up, let's spill the tea on the INTPs. I'm not sure they can handle it. INTPs, <laughs> INTPs can be like really mean, but in this really awkward way where it almost feels worse. There are certain types, we won't mention who they are, <laughs> ENTJ, <laughs> who are skilled at being mean. But the INTP, they're just like, it's just awkward and it's like, I, you're mean to me, and it felt like it was hard for you to be mean, but you really wanted to be mean. And now, for some reason, that makes me feel worse about myself. It's like the INTPs really need to say the things that they think are true, and they realize I shouldn't say that because it's not good, it's gonna like hurt someone's feelings. So I'm gonna get really weird about saying it because I gotta say it, man. Next, let's spill the tea on INTJs. INTJs, very smart, probably think that they're right about everything, but that's not the tea I'm spilling on them. The tea I'm spilling is that when things go wrong, they will find a way because they're so smart, because they can like, project out and see all these different connections and they can see what went wrong and where. They can be like, here's how it was everyone else's fault. It's also because the INTJs, when they are trying to figure out how to make something work, they are looking outward, they are trying to get other people's opinions, they're trying to come to the best objective conclusions so when things go wrong, it's really easy for them to say, it, this wasn't all on me. This was really mostly on all of you. When I came up with my business plan for a company that sells underwear with pockets in it so that you can put your wallet in your underwear, you guys should have figured it out and told me that this wasn't gonna work out and now it's your fault that I am bankrupt. Let's spill the tea on the INFPs. Do you think they can handle it? Am I gonna make the INFPs cry? The IN <laughs> INFPs might need to talk to our sponsor BetterHelp after this segment. INFPs are generally like really good listeners, but a lot of times they can also be blind to what other people want and even to how they feel. I've seen this go two different ways and just like a basic example, like a conversation. Either the INFP will do a lot of talking about a topic that they are really interested in, that they think is really cool, like all this, they'll be talking about all these things that they like, and everyone else is like clearly not really following things and kind of bored, and the INFP just won't realize it. Or the other extreme of that is, they will be trying to figure out what other people feel, and will just get so 
caught up in that and psyching themselves out that they just don't want to say anything or they'll be like really embarrassed about something they said and beat themselves up about it because it's like oh no I probably really embarrassed myself or I probably really hurt that person's feelings and it's like no one cares they're just projecting all of this stuff okay and last but not least we gotta spill the tea on the INFJ INFJs man this is gonna this is gonna hurt to hear it's gonna hurt when the scalding hot tea comes raining down on you right now INFJs will hold people to really high standards right which in and of itself can be annoying. And INFJs like to tell other people about like what they should do and how they should live their lives. INFJs are always trying to help other people by like giving them little lessons about how the world works and how to improve your life and whatever. And then the INFJs turn around and don't live up to their own expectations, don't even try to, and don't follow their own advice. They'll be like, if you really care about yourself and about your well-being, you will do these 10 things and it, you, it will improve your life. Then the INFJ will go home, not do any of those things, and then wonder, why am I not happy? Or the INFJ like judge people and be like, that person over there, they are doing the wrong thing, they should be more like this, and then the INFJ in their own life is doing the same thing that they just judged the other person for. Once again, betterhelp.com slash frankjames for 10% off licensed counseling. Next, now that I've done all this damage, I suggest you check out this video, which is misconceptions that I debunk about the 16 personalities, or check out the whole playlist right here and find another video to watch. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool and attractive.